Hello and welcome to Abiding Hope Church. We're thankful that you could join us in worship. As we gather in these next uh, past and future weeks, we're talking about the Lord's Prayer. And every uh, time we gather, we're going to be experiencing a different Lord's Prayer, uh, a prayer written by a theologian or a community. This week's Lord's Prayer has been written by the students at Abiding Hope Church. We took an opportunity to talk about what prayer is and using the Lord's Prayer, we were able to rewrite it in a way that, that drew us into the prayer. And so today, as we pray the Lord's Prayer as a part of our communion liturgy, uh, we invite you to have bread and wine or grape juice available for that. Uh, we just want to, uh, you to join us and our students here in the Lord's Prayer that we have written. We're also really interested in knowing who is a part of our digital community. We're really excited to know that commu community is real community, even when it's online. And so we want you to reach out to us, to let us know that you're there. Do you have prayer requests? Or is there ways that we can support you wherever you might be? We would love to know who you are. So if you could take a moment and send an email to glenn at abidinghope.org, that's Glenn with two N's, uh, we would love to find out who you are and ways in which we can support you. And now let us begin worship. O oh God, we come. We come to you with our praise and gratitude, and we come to you with our pain and brokenness. We confess we have fallen short, short of your purpose for our lives, short of loving as we ought, short of serving as we are able. Forgive us, Lord, and make us whole. Guide us, lead us, and sustain us that we may live more completely as the people you have called us to be. We are yours, O God, and we come to you. you to pray with me. God of all grace and goodness, you gave your son to us so that we may dwell in peace. We thank you for giving him to us like bread that we eat and that we would be a part of who we are. Today, as we consider the daily bread of your son, ground us in his teachings, trusting in his word and living with him through death and resurrection so that we may become your people and you can be drawn in as our God. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 6. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? 
Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What signs are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're continuing our process of walking through the the prayer we call the Lord's Prayer or or Jesus' Prayer. This is the prayer that Jesus offers the community to say, when you pray, I want you to be thinking about it. I want you to be aligning your hearts and minds to what God wants to align in hearts and minds. And so today we're talking about, give us today our daily bread. The text is pretty straightforward. It's, it's, it happens, uh, you, you don't, exactly catch it because what happened right before this was the feeding of the 5,000. So there was a lot of bread that people were eating, uh, bread and fish, and, and thousands of people ate bread. And it says that Jesus leaves, but they follow him looking for more bread to eat. And so uh, when they finally catch up to Jesus, uh, you know, they, they basically are there for more bread and uh, they come to Jesus and say, say, hey, Jesus, can we have more bread? And Jesus is like, hey, I've, I've got something even better for you. I've got something even better. Uh, uh, it's the bread of life. And they're sort of like, well, there's a confusion for a moment. They're like, well, what, what is the bread of, like, what do you mean by bread? What, 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 what is this bread of life? And Jesus is like, if you eat this, you'll never go hungry. And they have this wonderful moment where they're like, well, uh, Abraham, uh, Moses had uh, manna in the wilderness. What are, what are you going to give us? Like, how is this going to fit? And, and Jesus said, eventually says, well, I am the bread of life. It, it's me. I am the one that you are called to, for lack of a better word, consume. To, to eat the very personhood of Jesus is what Jesus calls them to ask. We, we don't see what happens after, but there is this little stage where they keep kind of okay, so what do you mean by this? And then this is a very difficult message. And Jesus goes further and further and further and saying, you have to understand what, when you trust in the one whom God has sent, that it, that's going to feed you more than anything else. And they're like, this is very difficult teaching. Finally, Jesus says, you have to eat me. You have to eat Jesus. You have to eat the the, the flesh of the son of God. Now he doesn't mean literally, of course, but that's how they take it. And it actually says they leave him. Many disciples leave him because the the story is too difficult to hang on to. And it's at this point where Jesus turns to those original 12 and says, are you going to leave me too? And they say, well, where else are we supposed to go? You have the words of eternal life. It's, it's that phrase that maybe if you grew up in a liturgical tradition like me, where it says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And they stay. So that's really the fullest story. But we have this little this little place in the middle where we're talking about Jesus being the bread of life and then the story of this manna in the wilderness. So in order to understand when we're talking about daily bread, we need to look at the story of manna. My first thought when I was thinking of daily bread was spending my time in Israel. I woke up the first morning in Israel and, uh, you know, all of the weird jet lag and I can't sleep. And so I'm up early and I'm trying to find my way. And so I eventually just kind of throw on some clothes while everybody is still sleeping. It's probably 4, 4.30 in the morning. Um, and I just start to walk through Jerusalem where we were staying. And, and as I'm walking, 
you can just start to smell this bread baking all around you. And it sort of permeates the entire alleyway where you are. And then, and then while I was walking, suddenly these, these uh, people came out with these huge square wood boards that they balanced on their head. And on these boards were stacked probably two feet, two and a half feet tall of pita bread. You know, maybe 60, 80, 100 pieces of pita on this as they were delivering these to the different restaurants all over so that when the people woke for breakfast, they would begin their day with this delicious, fresh baked pita bread. It was like three hours of sensory overload towards that bread. There's something about bread that, that does get in our souls. Isn't it? There's something even biologically that we're attuned to that when we smell bread, it, it triggers a hunger response. Even what I'm thinking about right now, my, my mouth is beginning to water. There's something about bread, which is so sort of key and critical to life. And so it's no surprise that these crowds want more of that bread. I mean, as we know now, biologically, bread creates cravings and we crave more bread when we eat bread because it's, it helps sustain us and it helps move us forward. So we crave it. But Jesus is talking something far more than early morning pita bread. And he's talking about something far more than the bread that the crowds ate when they were on the plane. Jesus is talking about daily bread and, and, it's interesting because the crowds for a moment understood it. They said, Moses, well, we had manna in the wilderness. What, what was the manna? In the story, in the Old Testament story, there's a story of the people who were uh, enslaved people in Egypt. They, they leave Egypt, but they end up in a wilderness. And then they spend the next 40 years, it says, uh, 40 being code for a very long time. They spend the next very long time wandering through desert and wilderness and scrub and along the way, they're struggling and they're hungry and they're wondering what to do. And they, they keep wondering whether or not they should have left Egypt at all. And it's during each of these moments that, that God is teaching them to rely on God, to, to provide for them what they need. And so in one of those moments when the people were so hungry, they're like, maybe we should just go back. At least, even though we were enslaved people, at least in Egypt, we had flesh pots, these huge, giant pots that they would put in the middle of a square and they'd put food in and anyone could go to and eat out of it. At least we had the flesh pots, even as enslaved people, rather than to come to the wilderness to die of hunger. And God does something. God says, uh, tells Moses, I'm going to provide something in the morning. And, and when, when they wake up, you're going to see what it is. And so it says that they woke the next day and all on the ground was this flaky white stuff, flaky white stuff. And the people all looked at what this flaky white stuff was, and they said, what is it? And guess what the word what is it is in Hebrew? It's manna. The word manna literally means, what is it? And so they saw all of this flaky white stuff, and they said, what is it? And Moses instructed them and said, this is what is given for you to eat for today, that you can eat this, what's on the ground. It's like it's like a bread-like substance. We're not sure exactly what it was. Some, some say it was some sort of uh, fungi that came up. We're not exactly sure, but it was a, a bread-like substance, a flaky bread-like substance. And, and Moses said, you can eat this for the day, but do not collect it. Do not save it because it won't last for tomorrow. And, it, and indeed, it says that the people collected and they ate their fill that day. And those who tried to save some for the next day, when they woke up, they found that it had all gone bad, that it had all gone sour and that it was no longer edible. It was only bread that lasted for a day, that lasted for that moment. When Jesus says, Lord, give us today our manna, our daily bread, we're, we're called to ask, what is it that we need for today? It, it's far more than uh, pita bread in the morning. It's far more than, than what we're going to put in our bellies. So the, the message completely gets it wrong. It says, give us three square meals a day. That's not what we're called to think about when we're in this text. We're called to think about what is it that God is going to provide for me that I need that lasts just for today. It puts us in the present moment and asks us, God, what is the bread that we need? What is the thing that you will provide that we can feast on just for today, that will get us through just today. What is it? What is it? What is the manna you have for us today? I know that uh, in our Family Life Sundays, we've been going through the fruit of the Spirit. 
And we're talking about love, joy, peace, and patience, and kindness, and goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. We're going through these fruit of the Spirit. And every time we get to a new fruit, fruit people are thinking, oh, I need that. <laughs> I need patience. I need, I need uh, joy. I need love. I need some peace. And sometimes we think, I want peace into the ages. I want patience from now and into all perpetuity. But maybe what this prayer is calling us to do is to center ourselves in our current moment and say to ourselves, God, what, what is it that I really need just today? Not thinking about a week from now, two weeks from now. What is it I need today? Maybe I need drive. Maybe I need energy. Maybe I need calm. Maybe I need friends. Maybe I need community. Maybe I need bread. Maybe I need something to eat. And we're called to stop in that moment and maybe think through those fruit of the spirit or whatever it is that you're called to look into to say, God, what is it you're going to provide for me just today so that I could be have what I need to carry me forward just for these next 24 hours? What can you help me with? What can you provide me with? And what can your spirit plant within me to bear fruit so that we can be moving forward in this in this path that you've got me for this life. This bread that we're called to do, it is this idea of those spiritual needs. But then Jesus reminds us in communion that the bread of life, that Jesus actually gives himself in the end and connects that to that daily bread in which we receive. Jesus says, you need to eat me. And I know that's such a difficult concept, but then when we think of this spiritual matter, it means to consume, to be, to bring into ourselves the being and the personhood of the Christ, the one who is deeply connected to God, who is grounded in God. And because sometimes it's hard to see when we're thinking of spiritual matters and we're, we're having a hard time seeing things as, as, as kind of this esoteric metaphorical understanding, Jesus gives us bread in the meal, connecting it with that Passover feast, with that Passover feast in which he collected the bread at that Passover and gave it to them and saying, this, this is like me, broken and given so that you can have what you need to sustain and to move forward in life. Jesus gives his own self all the way to death and then even past that resurrection so that we, you and I would know that to experience the life in which God is calling us to do, to experience life that is, that is more than just a moment, but, but brings us day by day in, further into the life of God. Jesus gives us this bread to say, this is what it looks like to, to actually consume the words, and to trust in Jesus' message, to know that Jesus lives and dwells within us, that day by day, Jesus will walk with us caring for us, supporting us, moving through us, giving us love and moving through our lives. And day by day by day, we can wait and say, God, what is it that you are providing today? And when we forget, when we forget, we can come to the meal. And when we eat of that bread and drink of that wine, we remember that Jesus was with us. And Jesus' promise will not abandon us. So what is your daily bread today? What is it you need just for today? What is it that the Spirit and God and Jesus can provide in you and through you to carry you forward? Dwell on this, hang on to this, hold this in your heart. And then as we commune, take that in, let that become a part of your body so that it may dwell richly within you. If you'll pray with me. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending on paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out in good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. In the name of love, whose name is Jesus. Amen. Every human needs food in order to survive. Every living thing. We know that. We also know that not everyone gets to eat. Not everyone lives with the comfort of knowing where their next meal will come from. Lord, forgive us for our knowing. It's overwhelming to think that there are nearly 8 billion people on this planet. It makes us feel small. That's why we need a daily reminder that even the smallest actions can lead to change. We need to be reminded that just as we share in the meal together each week at your table, 
We are your bread. Let us hear that again. We are the bread of life. We are here to feed the hungry, to right the grave injustices of our world, to comfort those who need it most. Remind us of this every day. Remind us because sometimes we'll forget and sometimes we'll have to remind one another. But your grace is unending and it lifts us up to do the hardest parts of living. And now with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, the world, this community, and for all people in need of prayer. Join me. Holy God, we pray for love, that the world may be surrounded in all the gifts that you have showered upon us that comes from your holy love. Plant it within us so that we may have joy. We pray for that joy to bubble up inside us despite all our circumstances, that we would trust in your promise, a promise that brings peace. We pray for that peace to ground us and root us so that we may live out of a place of patience. Make us patient with ourselves, forgiving others as you have forgiven us. We pray that that patience would pour out in kindness and goodness, that the way in which we live the world may be a bread, a manna to others. God, we pray for gentleness in our heart and soul, that this gentleness would come from your faithfulness planted in us, that we may be kind and generous to one another. God, we pray for self-control to rule in our lives, that everything we do may be strengthened in you and in your word dwelling within us. For all who are sick, all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, all who are experiencing violence in our world, all who are afraid, grant these things in the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbor. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we walk through the Lord's Prayer and this season, we are experiencing different Lord's Prayers. And so I invite you to pray this one with us, written by the students of Abiding Hope Church. As God's family, we pray together. Holy One, Creator, Protector, and Savior, whom we revere, we want your colorful vision of life for all here today, now, and always. Today, right now, we need rest, love, patience, comfort, and above all, joy. Forgive us for the injustice we bring to the world and help us to forgive the injustice we experience in others. Lead us to a life of abundance and growth in and through your body, the community of Jesus. Save us from forces that distract us from your vision of love. Everything is yours, the universe and all that is in it, we give you thanks and praise for all that you are. Amen. Jesus gives us this bread for the journey as a reminder to be grounded in the life and teaching of Jesus. Jesus calls us to trust in him, to trust in his words, to actually take his words in and let them be a part of who we are. So as we eat this message, consider the gift that Jesus is to you and what it is you need for today, for this daily bread to take root in you so that all may experience real life. So come and eat for the gifts of God are
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.